Right, let's go. All right, yeah. So uh, basically, what we're looking at is let's talk Egyptian for a minute. Omen Ra. You know? So he's Amun. So Amun is the great spirit of the universe, where Bayami is the great spirit of the sun himself. You know, and and like we said, your yeah, mother can be attached to the moon. You know. But this one, the Lord of the Sevens. So that mathematical magic of seven you're asking yes, me about? Yes. That's this guy, you know. So he's Amun. But importantly, what's happening here is when the sun shines on him, Bayami, so when Bayami shines on him, now he joins, he becomes Amun-Ra. Yes. And now he's the spirit of uh, the universe and the sun. You know, the most powerful thing in our whole system here, our creator, you know. So here we say, look at this sun's rays. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's the god of seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so to the mobs down seven south again. in Victoria and that, yeah, there, and I'll let them say his name because that's their story. I can't say that, you know, but they'll know anybody watching this. Their great uh, spirit of the sevens, you know, of the universe reflects, you know, into, into here it is on the walls, you know. And uh, so why he's there is because now he's the greatest spirit of all. And uh, he's, he's got a big job on his hands, you know, and it was so important to bring him to earth. So whilst the sun shines on him, while the rays are happening, he is here on earth. So he's here right now among us, you know. Mm. He's uh, Amun Ra, alive on earth. But this is beautiful, look at this. See what he's holding in his hand? Uh, to some it became a crucifix later, you know, and uh, some will call it an ankh, but it's not really. But anyway, so this is a very important traditional Australian symbol. It's, it's the tree of life, Tula Marie. So what it is, is in that story of when Bayami came to earth and he put into first man a, a stick for his leg from Tula Marie, from the tree of life nearby, just only down the road here, you know. Um, Tula Marie plays a big part in uh, his mother, you know. As the tree of life, she was mother alive here on earth. So he's carrying a piece of dura, a piece of the tree, a stick of the tree of life. And so later on in Roman times, of course, they changed what was to do with birth and newer life into a crucifix, a machine for death. And that's how far different, you know, like a, a Roman ideology was compared to original teachings from here in Australia, which influenced then, of course, the Egyptians, you know. And so what we're looking at is Umun-Ra, the great spirit of the universe linked with by army in the sky making him the lord of the sevens carrying a piece of dora from the tree of life Tula Marie and that tree's still there today you wouldn't believe it thousands of years later it's still there today but it's completely fossilized and hollow although it's several meters across it's as hollow as as my hand is wide and uh, <clears throat> why it's still there is because it exists on the very north uh, 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 sorry, the very top peak of Lion Island nearby, facing the sea, there's no new soils coming to bury it, like things get buried over time, you know, there's nothing, it's only salt, so the tree survived, even though it's been dead all these years, you know, and so Tula Marie, from the passed down stories of the creation story, and all those things, she's still there today, and, um, and what a sight I can tell you to behold, you know, uh, Yeah. so when I had my <coughs> presentation I mentioned to you, and like to mention you had a visitation, you better be fucking talking right, you know what I mean? You better not be talking shit. And uh, so I have no hesitation in talking it because this is how it was, you know. Um, that man, that was Didi in my eyes that came to me and he was standing on this rock. And what it was was because I was there and he was here. So he's looking directly at me. A moment ago I was in my house, you know, all of a sudden here we are. I'd never been in this place before, mm. you know. And he's looking down at me, so I thought he was taller than me. And I always told the story that well, that's that, that story what, that way, until I came here to see what was going on, you know. I'm standing there, so no wonder I'm looking up at him, you know. And he's pointing here, and, and he's pointing, and he's saying, take it, take it. And I, I'm looking at him saying, take what, you know. Like, I, there's a very black man in my house, you know, like inches mm. from my face, you know, demand. What's going on? And uh, the more confused I was, the more pissed off he got, you know. Mm. Take it, take it, he's shouting, you know. And then when I looked to the right and I seen this, this made no sense to me. You know, look at that now, you've seen it for the first time. It didn't make any sense of that. Uh, and I shrugged my shoulders. I said, look, I don't know. And when I turned around, he was gone. And I was back in the house and my calf was standing there laughing her head off, you know, <laughs> wondering what the hell was going on. And it, so it wasn't until I came here and I came to this place and I fell off the top up here and I landed down here. 
and I got up and, and I'm looking around thinking, oh, what the fuck, you know, I'm all right. And I turned around, and by the way, I got the iPad out of the uh, rucksack, and as I've done like that, I pulled it out, turned it on to make sure the screen still worked, and it was all broken, but it still works today. And as I've gone like that, there it is, mm. in the screen, you know. So like you're leaning against that wall now, I fell against that wall, and my legs went, and I, and I was like, and I looked up here and I went, okay, where are you? Come on, you know, old man. And I half expected him to come walking around yeah. that corner. But it didn't matter, you know. And I said to him, you know, I said, well, that matter. I said, you got me, okay, you got you done. You got me here, you know. I get it. But I didn't know then what it meant. So later, as the learning came and we learned more, this is his name. It's the words, uh, Didi of Dijed Snefru. And um, I had to sort of see it. What are we looking at? Uh, so, oh, there, there, here we go. So we can see it here now. So this is Nephra, and this is Ish, but this is uh, this place, like that, this place, because we're talking, we're mm. talking Australian Aboriginal here, you know, so like, they don't muck around, you know, this place. And uh, so uh, what he's saying is, uh, there's another glyph in here somewhere, I'm not seeing it in the light. There's something here, this is a hand. There it is, look at yes, it. Yes, an extended hand. Yeah, yeah dish, you know? So what we've got is dish, Snefra, and that's, that's he's saying, Dishnefra, this place. But importantly, when we look up at top, up here we've got um, this thing here, like that, and it's, so it's like a, a plant, you see that? And just to the side over here, there's a bird somewhere. Yep, above, above up a bit. Yeah. Isn't that up here? Yep. Child, you know? So this is south. So they're saying a child of a child of the south in Dijefna, this place, you know? But the other thing is, is this guy, his name is Didi, you know, and uh, so he's Didi of the Gurungi tribe in the year 2566 BC, mentioned all over the world. He's the most famous magician. I, if you've got your Google out now and went Didi the magician or Didi the magi, it will fill up your page for three mm. days and you'll never stop reading. So even today, this great chief from this land is the most famous magician on the earth mm. today. And if you were going to become a magician, as a trade, within your first three days, you'll be talked about Didi, the great magic, yeah. you know, and here he is, you know, and um, so, so again, you know, the, 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 the Didi, you know, Didi, yeah, that's him, so it's, it's saying two things, and this is why it's in a saket, it's in a square thing, it's a statement, yeah. unlike, say, something like this one over here, and you see this has got a rope on it, so this is a royal something, that's a different thing, it's got a royal protection, but this one, going back, is a box, and uh, so we call it a tech, and uh, it's, a, it's a, a statement of great importance, you know? and uh, so it gives both the name and the address. So a child in the south, Didi, of Dijed Snefru, at this place, you know, a beautiful statement. Incredible. You know? Incredible. Eh? And really look at this, is. I love this, look at that, the Gringi tribal marks, you know, from here. Yeah, And uh, Yeah, so these exist all over Egypt, you know, and uh, they, they mention the Gringi directly, like I'm saying it right now, Gringi, Gringi, yeah? Mm. It was all over Egypt. And it, so it's also the term they use for Thoth, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, one, is, one of theirs was Thoth in, in, the, in the way, well, that's another story. And, um, but, uh, so uh, again, the foot down here. Look at that. And that. So we've got uh, yeah this place again, you know. But this this is straight out of culture to do with the moon, you know. Yeah, yeah the place of the moon, the Gringi, you know. So in this place, you know, in the place of the moon, the Gringi make. So it's a pot. But if you're going to make that, you're going to make it with your hands. You know what I mean? Uh, so the Gringi making, doing with the hand. Yeah. Uh, is the Haru. So the human of Ra, you were born of the sun, eh? What about you, Tim? Yeah, mate. Uh, who's your father? The sun, you know? You're born, you know, so the human of Ra. And so th these, once again, are all known ideograms. They exist already, you know? So it's not like we're going to make them up. We could get um, a quality uh, translate uh, sign list. And when we look it up, we've got this place, you know, the home of the moon. And uh, although this will come up as Thoth, but we can expand on the story, but we can call it Thoth too, in this place, the land of the moon, Thoth, making, doing the work for the Haru. So this is Aboriginal Australia, you know. Mm. Uh, this is really interesting. See the half fish, half man thing? And uh, so this is a, a combination of India, Australia, and Egypt all working together. So again, this place, so they're talking about this spirit here, of this place, 
But look, it's a water spirit. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, I know you're probably the same, but you, where before I walk across the creek, you know, I'll get that soil off the bank, rub it in my hands and throw it in, you know, so that spirit knows I'm here. Otherwise, you know, drown, you know, or something, something's going to happen here. You know, you're asking permissions to go in the water, you know. So we all know that spirit lives in the water. So they're talking about the spirit in the water in this place. So India called her, her Matthew, M A T Y Matthew S uh, M A T S Y A. That'd be about right, eh? Matthew or Matthew, Matthew. And uh, so what? 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 A great job that she plays the spirit in the water is in that time here, three thousand one four two B C, seven hundred years before this business. In that time when the Indians came here to take uh, the great chief Manay out to teach the world, when they went in the boat, Machu pulled the boat across the world to make sure that they were safe, you know. And uh, so she's seen greatly, you know, in uh, the Indian um, tellings of what happened here upon Garingi lands and going out. And uh, so she plays a big part. So here when they're talking about what happened, that they came here, and it says up here, we came to carry. So you see this thing here? Yeah. And uh, and there's something else here that I can't see at the moment, but it's there. And um, what is it? But anyway, so we came to carry. But what what it's saying is that they got permissions, you know, you know, as they went over the water, you know, by mentioning her spirit, you know, mm -hmm. that they got permissions. And uh, so this guy here, he's really something else. And recently I came here. I came here in um, first day of December, and I was coming back from Egypt. You know, I've been on expedition out in Saqqara and out in the Sahara and Giza. <laughs> made a lot of discoveries there to do with this business, you know. So when I landed, I should have gone home to my wife, you know, but I didn't. Um, aided by another to support me, I came straight here and I came to this spot and I thanked this man. And I stood here and said, thank you, uncle, you know. So what it is, is this guy here, this is a guy that did all this but all this business, you know. And what we've got, there's a number of glyphs here that are telling his name. We've got that Dijet again. Yeah. So his name is Dijet Thor, by the way. So here's the Garingi mark, Thor, yeah. Thoth, you know. And uh, over here we've got this like a serpent doing this business. It's a Dijet, yeah. You know? And uh, so Dijet Thor. And uh, so this is him. So in the West Car Papyrus, it was Dijet Thor that came here to get Didi to take him back to Egypt. And uh, But what he did was, he didn't, he didn't just create this stuff after the, the shit at the fan and all went wrong and had to bury Khufu later, you know. But, but the thing was that he left all those clues around the world written in stuff like this, on rocks and in papyrus, you know, and, and in tombs and temples. He wrote clues everywhere to bring us here, you know. And, uh, and he did it on purpose. He went to an enormous amount of effort, you know. So like I said, when I came back recently from Giza, I came straight to this spot and gave thanks, you know, that he would do that, you know. And uh, I'd like to think he got the message, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he did, you know, because he's an ancestor, you know, at the end of the day. Uh, and um, so do you want me to read this for you? What's yeah, it? sure, please do. Well, it all starts right here in front of us. I think right that there. I would like to get on the other side of this, so I'm not shining a light in your eyes while yeah, I'm trying right. to let people see what you're doing. Yeah, uh, so it all starts right here. And uh, look, here's that priest symbol, remember? Yeah. We, were, we were asked about this on the telephone tonight. That'd be a good one to get the photo now. Yeah, I'll get a photo and, of uh, that for Marla. Yeah, I don't know what's happened here. Has someone damaged that or am I dreaming? Uh, no, they haven't. Looks like someone's got a stick down at the bugger. It's alright though, it survived. So it starts at the very bottom and it starts down here. And what it is, is this is the axe. I love this axe, you know. So this comes out of traditional art again, you know. And, uh, and it appears in cave paints and on bark, you name it, it's all over the place. And it's an axe. It looks like a flag, doesn't it? Mm. But you've got to remember, we're talking Aboriginal. And like, you ever seen like an ancestor carrying a flag? You know, that didn't happen. <laughs> but he carried a bloody axe. So the thing was about the axe was that that was the maker. And it, so when they image the chief, he's always got his axe. You know, and, uh, and it, it was because he could make a canoe with that thing. You know, he could make a bloody, you know, a, a, a seed carrying thing, you know, a bowl. He could get rid of an enemy, you know, so solutions, so the maker, you know, and um, so um, the, uh, the, the great maker, of course, is nature itself, you know, and uh, so this in Egyptian is the word natur, N-T-R, natur, but at the end of the day, it comes back to the maker, you know, so anyway, what it's saying is, this is servants, and, um, and, uh, 
What's that for a minute? Oh, it looks all them broken lines. Okay, words. Okay, so what it's saying is the servants of nature uh, have these words, you know, and uh, for the ruler, the girl. And this is where, this is Khufu we're talking about. So uh, it starts to unfold straight away. It's a girl. They were being honest. You know, like I said, they're always yeah. honest, you know. And so the ruler of the north, a girl. And, uh, but then here, the priests scribe so here is a paint thing yeah so that would hold paint in it and there's a little bit comes off it and it's the bit like the pen you know and that's so the priest scribe uh the the words and here we got a little thing going like tss, you know the words uh for the journey taking yeah and he says a, 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 an oar so they've obviously come in a boat they can come on a camel yeah and uh, yeah come for the taking so once again, uh, the servants of nature um, uh, be, uh, speak uh, for the girl, the ruler, the priests scribe the written words of the journey that to take. But then up here, it's um, the words um, says, like a... So it says, you know, and it's very powerful about it. It's got a great big one here, and there's a thing here, another one down. It should be three in total, I think. And uh, so they says, you know. So who's saying it? Who is all this? And who is this priest? Then it goes straight into his name, and that's the guy. The Z4 in this place, doing that thing again. Yeah. Boom, you know, in this place. And um, so this guy, his full name was the Z4 Tampus Macquarie. So after this event, two or three kings later, he becomes King Macquarie. So he's, when you go to Giza and you see the three pyramids and there's the Khufu, the, the Khafre and the Macquarie, this is him. So a builder of Giza stood right here where you and I are standing and hammered that thing into the wall. Uh, a builder of Giza, King Macquarie, fourth dynasty, the greatest, most uh, influential man you know, of, of time. You know. Unfortunately for Tampus Macquarie, uh, all his work was robbed. Um, what happened was in Giza in 1920s, I call it the crazy days of a test anything to anything. And what it was, was uh, uh, greatly a lot of the early Egyptologists, not all of them, but a lot of them were sponsored by the Vatican, especially Petrie you know, mm -hmm. and the French, you know. And, uh, and what it was, was uh, the Vatican wanted to um, uh, assert a place deeper in antiquity for Christian religion. And uh, greatly they wanted to find their Moses. And uh, so they suspected a man called Tutmosis, a ruler of Egypt, was Moses. And uh, so seeing the words written Tamphus and the words written Tutmosis, and they hadn't discovered Tamphus yet, this guy, um, everywhere where his works are, they said it was Tutmosis, their Moses, you know. And that, so one of his works would be the Sphinx. And uh, so Tampus Macquarie built the Sphinx, and that's why the Macquarie Pyramid is right next to it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, of course, Tutmosis wasn't born for another one and a half thousand years almost, you know. And uh, so what happened was Egypt wasn't just robbed of its gold and its antiquities, it was robbed of its real, more powerful story, you know. And unfortunately, separating Australia from uh, uh, Egypt, otherwise we'd know all this stuff already, you know. So uh, not to knock Petrie too much, you know. Um, he did a lot of great, you know, uh, they, they, they were brilliant, uh, genius men, you know, and we, I wouldn't be able to do what I can do today if it wasn't for people like Petrie. But still, you know, uh, in the earlier testing, and that's the thing about owning an agenda, you know, not using a naked mind and looking at things for their, their own value, but going in to find something you wanted to find. You're only going to see what you, what, you're only going to find what you see, you know, if you go looking for that thing that only you want to find. And that's mm -hmm. what we didn't do here. Approaching the glyphs, of course, all this was done, uh, born out from uh, the naked mind, because none of us knew what we were, what we were doing, you know. This uh, looks like a statement and a half. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Khufu, look at that, beautiful. And so this is her name, you know. And so these things really started to open up the story. So up here we've got that wiggly line again. But see, this one's got a triangle underneath it. So that means north, where the other one went south. Yes, okay. He was a child of the south, you know. This one's from the north, you know. And up here is a ruler insignia, so it's saying ruler of the north. But right over here, really special, is girl again. Yes. That girl thing, yeah. Keeps coming up, Keeps it? coming up, yeah. And then it tells her name, Khufu, yeah. Uh, one of the most famous uh, cartouches in the world. <coughs> so, this is interesting. See, it's got three lines through it. So this is Ka, you know. And so it's a moon symbol. 
And of course she's feminine because she's going to be attached to the moon. You're attached to the sun, but she can't be. She's a girl, you know. And uh, so in a boy's name, they, they often have a son there. And they say Ree, so D. Jeffrey, uh, you know, and uh, all them sorts of names. Like they've both got Ree in the end, you know. They have a sun symbol, but she hasn't. She's got a moon symbol. But, you know, inside the Great Pyramid in Giza, they said that there was, you know, there were some quarry marks found there. They're like crayon marks, and they look like this sort of stuff. And, and it was said they were fake, you know, and somebody, mm. they said this place is fake too, you know. And they said, look at that. You know, Ree isn't even done properly. It's got three lines through it. And uh, and a lot of people, you know, believed it because Ree is seen without the three lines. But, of course, the Bambara, you know, like, gives that place its credibility now, you know, because, yeah. of course, it had three lines in it, you know. It says Khufu, not, not you know, Ri, you know. So um, the Bambara helped to throw light on the quarry marks found within the Great Giza Pyramid, uh, giving them, uh, you know, the uh, credibility, you know, and uh, freeing them from what they were told. Uh, wonderful things here. I love this sort of stuff. So up here, this is talking about the crew. Like she loved her crew, eh? and they loved her, you know. So beautiful is the word here, you know. And uh, so it's saying... Uh, 100, this is a term 100, so 100 of the most beautiful, the most efficient, so this is a hammer and chisel, so that would have been a rock, and that was a chisel, mm -hmm. yeah? Bonk, yeah. Bonk, bonk, bonk. yeah, so it means efficient, uh, so 100 of the most beautiful, the most efficient, um, the uh, the most golden, and uh, meaning, you know, like the uh, uh, fine, you know, whatever, um, what else have we got? There's an animal here. Look at that. The bravest. So it's a big animal. Yeah. Bravest. You know. So she's talking about her crew. One hundred, the most beautiful, the most efficient, uh, the brightest, the bravest. What a lovely way to uh, talk about her crew, eh? Yeah. Huh. And uh, ac coming across the sea with the great mistress in magic. Um, and here's the flag again. You know, the, yeah, the creator, the maker. And and inside there. There's actually another little symbol again. You see that one? Yes. And uh, it's at South. Yeah. The great maker in the South. Otherwise, it would have a little triangle underneath it, like her yeah, name did. Yeah, yeah, up yeah, there, you yeah, know, to so North and South. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, Fantastic. yeah, coming up here, this is really good. This will blow you away. Uh, you've heard the story of the burning phoenix in Passdown Law. You know, yeah. It's an old story, that one, isn't it? And um, here it is, you know. And uh, so, what we can see here, this is the word for death. Now, funny thing is, Egyptians didn't have death. You don't die. You, you, you're still alive. Your you, light of life will just go on and be something else. But they had the term death for their enemies. <laughs> they didn't uh -huh. really wish that on them. You know, they have the same luck. You know? So it's really unusual to see. It's really, really super rare to see this term up here, death. You know, But what it is, is basically a curse. You know, and, and it's being held by this one here. And can you see that in the camera? Yes. And what you're looking at is a bird with a funny head on it. It's a phoenix, and uh, here he is here, here's his head, look, it's a phoenix head, you know, and, uh, and what it is, is culture tells us that Lion Island nearby is where the phoenix first landed on earth, and it came in the burning rays of the sun into that cave there, on fire, fed off Tula Marie, the tree of life, healed itself, and then flew off to spread its light around the world, and um, so Egypt tells a very similar story, you know, and uh, so th this sort of spirit is from before the time of man. Man didn't exist yet then, you know. There was a time on earth when it was, it wasn't all about man. You know? It's a recent thing compared to the ancient earth, you know. And uh, so um, this is ancient stuff, you know. And uh, look at me doing that. Uh, ancient stuff. And uh, But importantly, again, it's the passed down stories here on the walls, you know, as you've written here. Yeah, of the phoenix, and it is a phoenix too. You know, when you compare that to uh, and what a phoenix looks like, it's just like it. So in Egypt, they tell about this as well, and the, the, and they talk exactly about it. You know, and they talk about it being here on the walls. You know? And and this sort of stuff we can easily demonstrate just by opening up the iPad over there, and there it is. You know, we found it where they talk about that being here today. And of course, there's text all around it, isn't it? So you see how on this all of this is interesting. Good day for it. See how this is wet. So on this side, these glyphs are really worn. You know. And people say, oh, that's older than that, you know, it's been cast so well. But it stays like this for weeks after mm -hmm. rain. And come the February rains, you know, like this thing's soft and wet for like months, you know. 
So that's why this side is more worn than that side. Yeah. All this side gets is just the rain that comes in the day and then it dries, you know. But that side is a, a basically a, a waterfall, you know, um, all year round, you know. And that, so that's why that side's so worn. But the story starts where we did, comes down this wall and then starts down the bottom <coughs> and goes back that way. Okay. That's how it runs, yeah. Okay. Starts to talk about Lion Island here now. Uh, again, in that great honesty, you know, that they, Khufu was lied that she was a man to give her a, uh, a passage into marriage, you know, outside of um, the usual way, you know, to sanction of the throne. So when they draw her, they draw her like this, huh? you know, you can't tell what it is, can you? But yeah. it's still there, you yeah. know. And uh, so they're being honest, you know, in hiding that what she was, you know. And at the same time, so yeah, the the one we'll call her that for a, for a minute. You know, I call her the pseudo, you know, the imitation, if you like. You know, mm. and uh, but so the pseudo upon the lion, and she is, you know, with the creator. So again, this is um, traditional Australian. It's a word mal. Uh, so uh, number one, you know, creator. I want to say mal. I'm talking East Coast lingo. You know, mm. like you can probably go to the West, and but there's still one will be the creator. By the way, uh, it'll just have a different way of saying it. And that's that thing about numeric ideogram language that all the tribes use uh, they might have had different words for them but it was the same meaning every time so i could walk into your land and read your stuff you could walk in my land and read my stuff you know and we all knew we're all what we we're all saying you know so that that language that was shared between all people you know for that they call the tower of babylon was torn down don't they? and uh, that was that shared language you know that's where that wind you know? came down before just there just here yep right above us, yeah, right above us. oh really wow mm -hmm. Oh. Harry Man's having a bit of fun with us, I think. Could so. do, I've eh? seen him yeah. twice on the track on the way up here, right. but I didn't say anything to anyone. Yeah, yeah. They wouldn't bother us here, eh? Other than give you a bit of a nod like that. Um, we, we've got permissions, we've yeah. been, you know. Yeah. You know, right. Um, yeah, lots of good things here. Her age, uh, this is the age number 40. So we've got this thing here for time, but then it's got one, two, three, four notches, and each of them are 10. So in Egypt, too, it tells. Right in Giza, how exactly how old she was, that she was 40 years of old, you know, so we, we know by her name being all over the wall anyway, it's her she's been talking of, but at the age of 40, with the creator, with Mal, you know, um, and this is really interesting, so this is basically bad news, in a way, it's kind of good news, but it's bad news, you know, it's got this little bird on top, and this is, it wasn't a good thing that she's right with the creator right now, you know, she was only 40, you know, and she wasn't supposed to die, you know, and uh, so uh, it's it's a bad thing, is what they're saying, you know, for for the 40-year-old one, uh, you know, the pseudo on the lion, uh, taken, and see this bit, it's an arm, but it's got a big muscle, so it means taken, so violently taken, not yeah. just sort of like, come here, you know, yeah. violently taken, you know, um, so it's not a good thing, you know, and why isn't it? Because this happened, chaos, so remember what I was saying about a block of water? So this thing that hit him was freaking big. There's that big block of water, and this is a storm, you know. So this is the word chaos. And so what it's saying is she's on the back of the lion uh, for good reason, because she was taken in the chaos. And um, what happened is this is an anvil which you would use for making stuff, you know, hard work. So what happened was in the chaos, with much hard work, we turned around uh, in the storm. So the other one was chaos, this one is storm, you know. So going back, I'll just say it without you having to do it, but uh, she's on the lion because she was taken in the chaos. In the hard work, we turned around in the storm. Uh, is there something over here? Or does it go down after this? Jesus, it's really grown a lot of mold on her, eh? Yeah. yeah, it's good to see it's new life. It'll protect yeah. it too. Uh, anyway, but what, the, what happened was that we turned around, the ship turned upside down, uh, we gave praise, and uh, here is a broken uh, something, it's a flag isn't it, in nature, but when it's broken like this, the axe, you know, they're in trouble, you know, and uh, so the ship turned upside down, we're in trouble, we gave praise, sunk, the word sunk, so here's that body of water again, yeah. and then here's again a muscled arm, and the hand sunk, slaughtered. So this, uh, when I was in Egypt uh, recently, I went looking to find this sign to see it's still used. Because a lot of these things are still used today, you know. 
and sure enough there it was, it's at the front of the butcher shop. Mm. So you know like at a barber shop you've got that red and white yeah. pole, and which comes sign. from like bandages and shit, you know, from the, like, the days before the plague and all that, yeah. where the butcher, uh, the, the barbers took your teeth out and everything. Uh, well, the same way, yeah. So this is a rack of your spine, yeah, an animal, and here is an... Knife. I heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Hear that? Spirits out there. Uh, so it's slaughtered. So sunk, slaughtered, taken. The second ship goes upside down, and uh, so now they're in real trouble. And the thing about this one is, this has got a, a front on here like this, you know, and here's the back. If we turn it around, so the the, the front on on a, an Egyptian ship, each one was different to the next, a royal ship because it gave them um, identity. It's like putting the name on it, you know, Queen Victoria, or whatever, you, you know, HMS that, you know. So this, this prow at the front was different. So the Khufu ship that was found in front of the Great Pyramid, that today they put back together, it took 10 years to do it. They had to reinvent the technology, you better rebuild it together, but they did it. It's this same ship. It was that ship, the Great Khufu ship in front of Giza that was here. And how we can know it is, is here is the sign of royal ship. So again, the north, and here she is, you know, ruler. So that ship there, when it was found, had that insignia on it, its name, given it the royal ship, you know. And uh, so that same ship, you know, is uh, still there today. So you know how I was saying it's amazing everything survived? Yeah. This survived, all the <laughs> clues around, well, even the bloody ship, mm. you know. And here's the Jed Force too. The two ships survived, you know. Yeah, unbelievable. And uh, so what else we got? Mighty gods and things over here. And uh, so, uh, um, yeah, so <clears throat> this is interesting. So uh, uh, we've got uh, eagle. Yes. Yeah. So the eagle features a great deal. It's the great spirit, you know. But what's different about it, or important about it, is that uh, all through Egypt, when you look at it, it's the same eagle. It's a wedge-tailed eagle. Mm -hmm. And wedge-tailed eagles are unique to the east coast of Australia. You don't go them anywhere else in the world, you know. And through all that text, and you see all that beautiful stuff in Egypt, it's the Australian wedge-tailed eagle every single time. So we've got mighty here, you know. So Nurta, nature, again. And the maker, mighty great God, yeah. On the journey. So it's like a snail, see like that? And it says on the journey, you know. And, uh... Geez, these are hard to see, aren't they? I should know all these off by heart. Um, that appears to be a cross with a little round and a tri upside down triangle on the top. Yeah, I'll have to go back to old film before all this stuff. Oh, yeah, okay. Heavenly protection. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, okay. So uh, so it's him giving the protection. Yeah, so uh, the uh, the maker, the mighty great spirit, you know, for, uh, the, for the journey, giving heavenly protection. Magic. Yeah, under the southern sky. There we are, under the southern sky. But look at that there, there's a star, heaven. And of course, you know that story I was telling you about that they brought heaven, this is heaven on earth, you know. Uh, this one, you know. Uh, so on their journey to this place, they got royal protection. And uh, then uh, golden uh, down here. So uh, Horus is, so what it is is uh, golden. So now he's home, yeah. Uh, in this place, so like he sort of achieved it. He's at the top of the you know, end of the journey, if you like, you know, and um, ends there. Then it goes back and starts again. And um, so, uh, sorry, sorry, here we've got uh, again uh, the nurture, the maker, the the ruling king or, or queen, you know. But what it is is she's got a flail in the hand, so she only holds this flail while she's ruling. So if later, 72 days from now, after she's been dead 72 days, she's not ruling anymore. The new king or, or queen comes in. She has no one anymore. She's just seen like that. So what this tells us is this was carved within 72 days of her dying. She's still reigning. Yes, yes, you know? okay. The keys are in the images on the walls. That's good, isn't it? Okay. Right? Yeah, so the maker, you know, the ruler, if you like, uh, ruling and uh on the making for the journey and again you've got to make that with your hand for her behind the hidden wall in true truth into the coffin with the sitting god so the sitting god is the god that sits alongside you and looks after you in afterlife you know and uh but uh i see what you mean someone's been mucking around here haven't they yeah yeah and uh it's so finding isn't it yeah is uh the man-like one so 
in Egypt they have this all the time, but it has ejaculate coming from. Well, they also have it this way too, but there's two ways. There's man and man-like. So it is, would the word a butch girl be a wrong term to use, you know? Man-like, yeah, aren't they? Yes. They're so proud Masculine. to be. Masculine. Masculine, yeah. yeah proud to be and it, so they would be man like so this would be the right term to use to describe you know such a gifted young lady and uh, but if it was a man it would have ejaculate coming out and then that's man one you know and uh, so here she's fallen you know and uh, and here is uh, the triangle which is another part to this area here it's another story again you know but um, so th who is it they're talking about it's the man like one so and, is that um, how she was killed she fell uh, she drowned and them chips went upside down, yeah, so, but she's over, it's all over for them, you know, like, and uh, they're, in, they're in great trouble, you know, and uh, so here, uh, what have we got now, so it's still going, yeah, so uh, where was it going, so behind the hidden wall, in true truth, in her coffin, alongside the sitting God looking after her, is the man like one in big trouble now, you know, and uh, so uh, the door, um, or the seat uh, is it made yeah, uh, in the western mountains and that's the blue mountains right behind us you know mm -hmm. where mother lives you know that's her that's her domain that's god's <coughs> the creator's garden over there you know and um so uh, and then uh, this is starts off a new sentence over here and uh so i'll come back to that because we'll go back again and you see more down the bottom eh? and uh so what we've got here, this is wonderful, the brightest, look at that, and that, so the brightest girl, the fullest, so this is like a, a bowl, but it's got a handle, it's heavy, it's full, so it needs a handle, you know, and uh, so she was the brightest uh, girl, uh, the greatest, uh, and that's straight into the Haru, so where are we going with that, uh, so again we've got Haru, oh here we go, protect, so here is the word protect, so the brightest uh, for the mistress, the greatest, the Haru, protect. Now this is really important what I say next, all right? That's a contract. Uh, it's a contract for the custodians here protecting this place. And so the thing is that the custodians' you know, culture is still alive today. Nothing's changed. This place is still here today. Egypt is still there today. The same, the same culture is still there today. So this is a valid contract. This is the oldest valid contract on earth that gives the people here um, uh, yeah, custodial um, rights, uh, everything to do with it, you know, in the way that they have a contract, the oldest contract on earth. So it's important in a lot of things. It's the oldest contract on earth. It is a contract, you know, and, and what that, the consequences of what that means for this place. It was a contract standing, still live today, that the Haru protect in this place, you know. And, uh, and this is really interesting, on the back of the lion. And what's happening here is, this is, imagine a lion sitting there, there's his tail and there's his hind leg. So rather than draw the whole line and then put a thing going, look at the back, they draw the back. So, so in Egypt, this is in the sign list, this is called the back of, you know. And, um, and and known to be the back of a lion, you know. And of course, we know that she is placed over there on Lion Island, you know. So it is, uh, this contract is giving jurisdiction to this area, but especially Lion Island, especially, you know, um, as uh, that they are custodians of it. And uh, so in stone, off the bushy trail. Lovely. These people are desert people. Yeah, what push trail, you know, and this, so this again exists all over Egypt in text because they're telling this story again and again and again, you know. Do these represent yeah. bushes? Uh, th this here, so it looks like a, what would you say? Some people think it's a sail, you know, okay. but for whatever reason, it's off the beaten track, okay. and uh, and um, and often it has, and when they tell it too, they actually put the bush next to it, so off the beaten back in the bush, yeah. and uh, so this is stone, you know, been worked stone, you know. So once again, on the back of the lion in stone, off the beaten track. Uh, wonderful stuff. Um, so uh, here it tells a lot about her. Um, that uh, this is a dog's bone, you know, and here. But so this is the word inheritance, and uh, it's an actual word. So the thing is that she's not going to get her inheritance. It's not going to happen for her, you know, for this maker, this ruler. See, she's still got the thing in her hand. Um, so for this maker, ruler, she's not going to get her inheritance. 
and her inheritance is her house on the horizon. So when they draw the Great Pyramid of Khufu in Egypt on text and things, that's exactly how they draw it. That's called the house on the horizon. So she's dead. She's not going to get home. So she's not going to get her inheritance uh, or her belongings, what belongs to her, her house on the horizon. Uh, not gonna. And it's the word just like that. Not gonna here. Yeah. Not gonna come forth. Remember we, we've seen this on the tomb wall to come into, to come forth. So it's not gonna come forth. The, the magic of her servants. Uh, so it's not going to come forth because the magic of her servants didn't work. But then, now here it goes, she's down deep. And that's why I know she's down deep over there. So, and they did it so bold. So they're not just saying, oh, she's down deep. It's deep, you know, broken under the ground. And this one too, traditional Australian Aboriginal, you know, under the ground. You know? So once again, she's not going to get an inheritance. She's not going to come forth because the magic failed. She is down deep, her body broken under the ground. Not for him, her bar. You know the bar mm -hmm. that we talk about it goes up the nose, you know. Not for him, the bar. Cut off, it's a knife. Cut off from her house on the horizon, on the myrrh. It's the Nile, it's called the myrrh. And uh, not, for, not to come forth, she's not going to get there. Uh, because she went on a journey from her land of Chem, Egypt, you know, beautifully said. Um, uh, uh, yet never for the mistress to the Mer home. She's never ever going to get to go home ever again. She's cut off, you know. So what we're looking at, and this is a wonderful slide. Remember I mentioned uh, earlier I was talking about international shared symbols. So this symbol is seen used all over Earth, you know. And they say it's the word for town or city. Well, more important than that, it's a word for home. You know, it's your town or city you're talking about, you know, homeland. So that also exists on an angle turned sideways, and it's the other land when they talk of here. So when they tell this story in Egypt talking back, it says the same sort of stuff, but then that's turned that way. So it's talking in retrospect, you know, uh, talking about um, this place. You know, So that's a symbol um used for australia you know when it's turned sideways that that great land in the south you know land of Dijed, and there's something more up here look at that and that's so up here what we've got is um you can see here we've got this sort of uh, mummified sort of uh symbol and it obviously got breasts and feet you know but there it is again the man-like one and if i just go backwards just over here what it's telling us is is that she's dead but she's not on that bed she's not there to stay she's not here to hang around you know so she's gone but uh, the fallen one the man like one done the right way uh coming forth is held so that's the thing that you put around a camel's feet so it wouldn't run off in the desert on you in the middle of the night uh so coming coming into she's held across the water in that place in the great house of the creator talking about lion island over there road over here um, <clears throat> uh, making a seat so making again uh, for the car so that's the other part of her soul protected there uh, for this sitting god king um, now i'm losing it in the dark as we head over there I can't quite see that. Um, oh yeah here we go see the serpent that's really interesting eh? Uh, so what have we got here all hard to see. Oh, the others. Look. So here's that symbol for others. So upturned bread loaf. That then boom, boom, boom. The others. So um, let's just go back again. So, so oh, this might be a clue, you know, because you know I've never found these others, eh? So again, yeah, she's she's in that place in the house of the Creator. Um, her car, once again, and uh, it's hard to see in the dark, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, protected is uh, the sitting God King. Uh, and again the serpent. So what's important about the serpent is that, and again it takes us, oh look, mother, look at that, mother, yeah? um, is that in this land here, over Broken Bay was seen a great serpent was across the sky and uh, and what that serpent did was he protected there, you know, I shouldn't call him a he, it could be a she, and, uh, but protected there anything coming in, you know, like because that's coming into to the creator's garden, you know, and you had to get past that. So this this serpent that inhabits in the sky above Broken Bay area is the most powerful serpent because it's guarding the Creator's garden, you know. 
So even the sun can't get past that thing without uh, something special happening. That's how powerful it is. So this serpent in the sky here has got the power to stop the sun in the sky. And of course he does, doesn't he, on initiation day, you know, in that late last mm. week of, um, of um, you know, uh, December. You know? And uh, so, um, so this guy's really important, you know. I forgot what I was saying about it. Um, yeah, I forgot what I was saying about it now, but... Uh, but anyway, later on into uh, Egyptian and uh, Sumerian, Alcadian, all the Roman stories, you know, uh, the way it comes up there, of course, is is a serpent um, that they have to fight, you know. But the thing was that we don't fight that serpent, you know. <laughs> you, know you don't go fighting that thing, you know. It's all you do is to sort of like uh, threaten it and show your sovereignty, you know. I have sovereignty to walk in there, you know. You can't stand in my way, you know. That's enough. But the, the way it went on into into later mythologies, you know, it exaggerated into basically they came here and killed the serpent, you know. And um, but yeah, <coughs> stories change over time, you know. But yeah, the important part of the country is that is that one there. So this is really interesting. Below it, this is a spell um, here, and and what it's talking about is that um, it's talking about so that this term here we see this. This is a traditional Australian term, by the way, you know, and. Um, and uh, but importantly, what it is, it's um, what do you call like someone who delivers something? Um, envoy, envoy, envoy yeah. Cour courier's good too, yeah, or envoy, you know, whatever, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, um, where is it? Yeah, so, uh, so here, what it is, it's telling what they've done with her soul, they've made her into an envoy of, of, of uh, working for, uh, for, for the spirit because you know, that's what they did, they gave her a job, you know. So, this is talking about where they gave her a job, so it's saying it is done up here so it is done uh, for the envoy of the creator uh, in truth the one who is the girl in her coffin alongside the sitting god um, and now uh, uh, over here uh, the servant um, okay I'll go again now it is it is done uh, that for the envoy the servant Oh, what we got? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, in true truth, the one who is the girl, the sitting God. You know, there's no flail now. Yes. You know, things have changed, you know, now she's in spirit, you know, uh, in her coffin, in the place made for heaven. And that's really interesting, the place made for heaven. But these guys didn't make a place for heaven, like they're burying a woman, that's all they're doing, you know. But this place, I mentioned earlier about um, several hundred years before, the great chief Manet of Karingai law here, in Gringo Challenge, it tells that he made a place for heaven here on earth. Using his magic, he brought heaven down from the, from the stars and created it here on earth for our ancestors to live alongside us. So when the Egyptians talk about this place, they use that um, uh, symbol greatly, and it's the symbol for, in ideogram, this place made for heaven. You know? Excellent description, you know? Mm -hmm. And... Um, yeah, this guy won't never get to heaven. Look at him. He's a fool. That guy has doomed himself. PD, you don't got no idea what no. you have bit yeah, off. What a fucking idiot, eh? Idiot, you know? Um, Same one did the fucking eye on the cock, mate. Oh, it looks like he's done in here. Yeah. This will be interesting. Well, Rio, yeah. just uh, what's behind the echo? That'll do. Uh, uh, can you hold that? Sure can. I'm going to go that way. It looks like a rough wall, eh? But these guys were good. I'll keep going as far as I can. It'll do, I suppose. I'll run out of light. Huh, look okay, at that. What's this? You're kidding. <laughs> that is unreal. Yeah, yeah, on. And look, I'll go right down. Yeah. Pretty flush. Yeah, it's incredible. Much, within centi a centimetre here yeah. and there. Along the way, I'm going to go right up, it's the same again. Yeah. And uh, so, right. what it is, is this wall is prepared, it's not just a fluke, you know, it's uh, been prepared. And uh, so, what did they prepare it with? Well, they used a thing called for like the string one, it's called a chalk uh, a cord saw, and uh, basically, it's made out of whale guts. And uh, but the thing is that um, you can start a line off and then put the string into it, made out of whale gut. But then you put into it uh, compounds made out of sandstones and quartz mm -hmm. uh, that will be coarse. 
And uh, so, well, I've got a stream in my hand, haven't I? Uh, so by doing this, you end up uh, and putting in the, the core stuff. Right? Yeah, and then you end up cutting the rock. Yeah. So it's called a core saw. So let's look behind you for any evidence if that's true or not. You know? And uh, so when we look at places where it's still exposed, because unlike Egypt, they didn't have uh, plaster and shit here. So working with this stuff, this is, you can still see what they did, you know? Still there. Uh, it's definitely here. I'll try this way. Uh, running that way, I know, even though I can't see it well right now, but I know not just off by heart. Perhaps you both can see. But so all along the walls, perhaps in different light, but are the cord marks from the cord saw that, that operated here to get this into being as flat as it is, you know? So this would have been as lumpy as any old rock yeah, yeah. at the end of the day. Mm. And uh, probably up the other end it might be even more so. In the daylight you'd look and go, well, I see what you mean. Um, so that's what they did, they prepared this rock, you know? Uh, lots of text up here. Uh, some beautiful stuff, straight out of the Book of the Dead, you know? And uh, talking about Khufu again over here, and so on. And uh, but this stuff is written in Egypt, like I said, and things like the Book of the Dead that they couldn't read until 2014. And here it was, so there was no chance anybody copied this, you know. This is absolutely gorgeous down here. And uh, so down here it's talking about Lion Island again. And uh, so I can't quite make out that. What's that? Um, the screens are good, aren't they, to look through? Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they help a lot, they bring out a lot. But, um, so some of this text I couldn't read up until a couple of years ago. And, um, like in total, you know. And uh, if any part of this that I couldn't read was a real bugbear, because if you can leave any one sentence out of a, any one word out of a sentence, you don't really understand that sentence, yeah. you know, you just think it. Oh, shit. Uh, how do you get light? Light. light. Um, oh, I'm going these guys. I was... I can... Oh, um, so I can't quite make out what that is. But anyway, um... Uh, I'll just get the car for you. Sorry, man. I should know that off by heart. Um, but, anyway, I'll go with this. So, what we've got here is... When you see this in bed light, there's three. There's actually three. Yes, I saw that. I've photographed yeah. it today. And actually. it says three doors, you know. So there was always three doors. There was always two hidden doors, and then there was the door, the actual door, you know. And uh, there's always false doors. So behind the, the false doors, and so this is a rope with knots. The way that it's the best way to pull something up, you know, like you, yeah. it's got knots in it, you know. And uh, so this is talking about behind the, the hidden doors, pulled up on the sands. And what it is, it's part of Egyptians telling about when they made it to heaven, they came in this boat that followed the sun, and there the boat was pulled up on the sands. Mm, you know? yeah. And uh, so they're saying that behind the, the doors, pulled up on the sands, um, and uh, at the back of the lion uh, is the ruler, see the bee, and the ruler of the north. Look, there's that north thing again. Mm -hmm. So the ruler of the north in the house. And so this thing I thought was a satek, a statement, you know how that yes, other one yes. was? Until I was here with a French researcher, Dominique, uh, who'd come from France here to help. There are a lot of people involved in this from all over the world. Yeah, and uh, and here I am, you know, with Dominique, and there's a big crowd on the day, there's about two dozen people here, and they're watching us. And I'm reading this and stopping and reading and stopping, not getting it. And Dominique suddenly put out, he went, look, there is nothing there, it's natural rock. So that's a gap, see, the text, it goes like that. So this is house. Okay. So what it was saying was, behind the hidden doors, pulled up on the sand at the back of the lion, inside the house, the ruler of Egypt in the north, in her coffin, in her temple, built inside. So that's that thing where they opened up the, the, the tomb on Lion Island, the tomb of Menei, King Menei of the Gringai, and they put a temple in there, for her, giving her a home. Uh, so they placed her in there, there's her arm, but this time it's not that big bulky thing, you know. Yep. So placed her there on her journey. Um, uh, the servant in true truth. And then comes up them eyes, eh? And, uh, and this gets really amazing here. So there's a big eye here, and right alongside it is another one, they go together. 
So this here is three circles and here's a big square. So this is chambers and numbers, the numbers of the chambers. But importantly, this is the eye of Thoth. So what this text is saying is the chambers of the numbers of Thoth. So in the West Car Papyrus, when Khufu left Egypt to come to find the, the numbers of the chambers of Thoth to copy them into, uh, into Giza to build something there, uh, well, obviously she found it, you know, and here it is, you know, written on the walls, you know, and uh, so she ended up, you know, uh, across the water, placed in there on the back of the lion, the servant of true truth in the chambers of Thoth. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, she got a home in there, you know, for her car. Yeah. So here we're seeing car, that party spirit, and alongside the two hands. And your car is so pure, you can't touch that thing, you know, so the hands never touch. And uh, so this is a car being lifted up, you know. So for the car coming into uh, true truth in the house of light, which is the island where the sun hits the light every day, you know, and um, comes forth greatly into the house. Is it a bowl for the maker or making? Um, yeah, amazing. There's Haru again. Look at that one. That's a cracker. Yeah, yeah. That's a big one, isn't it? Yeah. And look at that there, it's uh, the brightest again, the brightest ruler of Egypt, you know, brightest ruler of all, in the dark, and uh, dark, eh? and it's pretty dark here right now, and uh, <laughs> oh, so this is talking about the priests, so we can't really read all this in the dark tonight, it's a shame, but yeah, we, we have um, filmed this before, so you actually get this any time on the internet, yeah? and uh, where all, all this, I've read it, so when I first translate all this stuff, I never read that wall publicly for the first four years. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, one of the first things country taught me was don't spend it all in the one shop call. Very wise. <laughs> you know? And there was no need. We had enough, you know, on the other wall. So I, and, and the other thing was that I wasn't totally confident of what all of this said, you know. It, it, it really took that long. It really took, you know, almost five years, you know. To, and there's only 500 texts, for goodness sake. You know? And the ideogram, how easy is that? But still, could you explain to people what they're called again, please, Colin? So, th what we're looking at here is best called as best described Proto Old Egypt ideogram text circa 2566 BC. Um, so, what they are are um, a, um, a, a series of texts where the structure used in making words and sentences, uh, the symbols are chosen in their place, placement and choice for their ideogram values in comparative to say um, an alphabetical text where something is a A and a B yeah. and a C and a D. Uh, so here we're a great uh, Australian again, you know, Wedgetail Eagle can be the letter A in Egyptian alphabetical and the foot with the boot can be the letter B. In ideogram the letter A uh, sorry, the, the uh, wedge-tailed eagle is the great spirit. And the foot, the letter B, isn't a letter at all, it's this place. So that's the difference between an ideogram and an alphabetical. Yeah, okay. And of course what happened here was in the early days, a lot of good meaning people tried to translate this, you know. But everybody did the same mistake where they applied alphabetical. So they came up with all sorts of random stuff that, don't, like the cow jumped over the back cupboard you know like it didn't make <laughs> sense you know yeah and then they tried to make it sense you know and of course it never did uh but of course when we realized what they were and how we realized again was it was that great influence of culture um that uh yeah made all that difference you know without looking through culture's eyes we never would have got this you know and uh so what that great window into the ancients, you know, like to, to understand them, you've got to understand their culture. And that's almost impossible where a lot of places are extinct, you know. How do you do that? But we're unique here in Australia. We're very lucky that the same culture still exists today. So for any researcher, you know, I recommend to them all that you need to learn about culture. And keep in mind, you can't research culture. You've got to be a student of culture. Yeah, you know, there's nobody that's ever been a. Gee, that was a big fight, wasn't it? No one's ever been a, a, a yeah, successful researcher of culture. That doesn't happen, you know. You've got to be a student of culture. And uh, so, for anybody working in paleo studies, 
they sh it should be compulsory, you know. <laughs> they should all, yeah, somehow attach themselves to uh, yeah, traditional peoples and start learning, you know. And because what what it, what it does to you once again is because they're unchanged, you know, passed on the same through time. Uh, looking through a traditional person's eyes today is the same as looking through these guys' eyes, you know. And that's what opens up then the whole the whole window, you know, that you can start to see things properly, you know. Um, so that's what it took for me, you know, was uh, even, you know, I did have a lot of stripes of uh, genius every now and then, you know, but I wasn't going to get it all, not without um, being uh, able to look through culture's eyes, you know, and um, that wonderful gift we have, that wonderful window of uh, to view through, you know. It's incredible. Yeah, it is a rebel on the night, that man. Thanks, no, thank you, mate. Uh, this has been yeah. absolutely perfect. Yeah, look at that fine example of a mummification knife there. Uh, is that what not, it is? Yeah, it is, yeah. Not used for anything else. Okay. Yeah, mummification knife. So here, this is talking about the, the work that they did. And it starts over here a little bit, that uh, the Haru. So well, this is really important because this is telling, this is this is Australian traditional cultural people doing this, you know, that they're mummifying her, you know. So they ca they carried those skills too. Not that they mummified a lot around here, but they did up north. And it's the same mobs, you know. And uh, at the end of the day, anyway, but so, you know, the Haru, um, uh, I don't know, probably something there we can't see it in this dark, you know, it's awful hard to see, isn't it? Uh, what do we got? Oh, here we go. And the priests, okay, yeah. and uh, using the magic, here it is again for the mistress, uh, the secret words. So, this thing here is damaged now, but there you can see a knot, it's like a book or papyrus turned sideways yeah. and tied. It's a secret, you're not allowed to see it. Only the priest knew this shit, you know. So the Haru and the priest uh, uh, cutting you know, uh, the great uh, with the magic for the great mistress with the secret written words mummify. You know, so that sharing, like I say, that took place here. This is um, they were sharing magic. It wasn't just all like you know, one guy lifting a rock for the other guy. You know, this her business of being sorted and her soul being saved, all that stuff was a combination of the Haru and the priests of Egypt, you know. And uh, again, Tim, that's that one that um, yeah, you know, last asked about. Yeah, yeah, that's a good example of it, that one, yeah, actually. Yeah, a photo of that. Yeah, yeah, it's a cracker. Yeah, so all this we can read today. And um, and I've got to say, it's, it's all good news. It wasn't good news for Khufu, of course, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it's good news for us today in the way that um, it, uh, it, it says a lot but it opened up so many windows you know into so many other uh, places of uh, things that now we can understand there as well you know this was in the beginning you know and so as big as it was first translating this you know in in, in those years when we could do that it's just been paled you know a hundredfold by what we learned afterwards uh, coming out from it amazing amazing and so i might go up there and have a look at that um Spot, eh?